Hello and welcome to Product Popcorn, the podcast that explores topics related to product management, most of the time. We talk with product managers and also designers and engineers that work on product teams, and only sometimes discuss the possibility of artificial intelligence taking over the world. You can always read more at productpopcorn.com. This week on the podcast, my guest is Tyler McCann. Tyler is a product manager at Shutterstock, and I asked him to come in and talk about Agile, different styles of Agile, and how he implements Agile at Shutterstock. Spoiler, we do complain about Jira for approximately 10 minutes. But then I swear, we actually do talk about different styles of Agile and product management, and how Tyler convinced his entire engineering team to try out Swarm Pattern. If you don't know what Swarm Pattern is or how it works, you'll have to listen to find out. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Product Popcorn. I'm Kimberly, and I'm a product manager. I'm Adam, and I wrangle uh, armadillos. No. We're going to go into my job description real quick, though. <laughs> we're Okay, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, this is getting out of hand this week. I did not, I did not <laughs> plan that far ahead. Thank God. Uh, Adam's a front-end developer I'm a front-end developer, sometimes. yes, sometimes. Uh, so he claims. And we have Tyler McCann with us today. Say I hi, do, Tyler. I do not wrangle armadillos. Thank God. We do not need two of those. He just snuggles them. <laughs> if you guys are... Nothing wrong with that, okay? <laughs> They're cute. It's a liberal state. That's okay here. <laughs> oh, God. I w- that wouldn't be my first choice of animal to snuggle with. But anyway... Yeah, the whole leprosy thing. You ever tried it? or Leprosy? Yeah, I think they like carry leprosy. Like for real, check no, that. No, sh- you made no, that no, no, up. no, 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 no. I'm, pr- I am pretty <laughs> sure they carry leprosy. And I'm not making that up. I'm gonna start. Some like- of them, not all of them, obviously, because that'd be a problem. But some of them can carry leprosy. I feel Do you like hear I- how he's hedging? It gets less and less certain the more he's talking. Tyler, I feel, I feel like we should start furiously googling this, yeah. but um, I don't have enough. Enough. We don't need to. If you take if you take anything away from today's podcast, <laughs> take away that you should n- probably not snuggle armadillos unless you want leprosy. Thank God, I I was you know gonna do that tomorrow morning. Yeah, because so that'd be awkward. You saved my life. Uh, if you remember <laughs> from episode three, Jamie Love was talking about his product manager at Shutterstock and how awesome he was, and so I was like, yo. I'm going to find that dude and have him on the podcast. That's how Tyler got here. So, fun story. Tyler is that dude. Is that dude. (laughs) This is true. (laughs) True story. (laughs) And um, we're going to be talking about Agile today, different styles of Agile and product management. The big, the bold, and the ugly. And we're going to go into other Agile methodologies like yoga. Like yoga, yeah. Because you're very Agile. Very flexible. Flexible. Exactly how that works, too. <laughs> God, so off topic already. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> All right. Um, a little, a couple items of housekeeping. One, please leave us a review on iTunes. We are stuck on like 13 or 14. And I just, I think it's Thousand. 13. And I'm like, good God, that is an unlucky number. We need to bump it up just by like one or two. Or only takes a second, guys. Four hundred or four hundred. As long as they're five stars, only review it if <laughs> if it's five stars. Is that loud? Can I say that? No. I think it's required, actually. I mean, four maybe, but mm-hmm. if it's like, I mean, just don't be a dick, you know. If you leave anything less than five stars, we're going to find you. <laughs> this is not true. I, we don't have those analytics. I mean, we have a lot of listeners, like, internationally, so it would be probably pretty expensive to go find them. Oh, we were supposed to shout out. Shout out. To who, ah! are, who are we going to shout out? Berlin. Berlin was, Ber- I think, oh, our yeah. number one. No, London is our number one uh, international city, and then I think after that's Berlin. Berlin. Yeah, shout out London. Shout out Berlin. Um, Another thing, what do you guys think? So, like, since the HQ2 buzz, the Amazon HQ2, just to clarify, mm-hmm. yes. about a month ago, like, I haven't heard anything else about it. Like, what do you guys think's going on? Um, I think... Um, I think Denver's still in the top running? I don't think we did a great job presenting to Amazon, so I don't what? think we picked our best spots uh, for their headquarters. Oh, wait, what do you <laughs> so, know, Tyler? What do you know? Where did we well, Where did we try to sell them? Uh, I, I want to say it was uh, Superior, uh, so it was uh, 15 minutes out of Boulder. Oh, um, that that they they offered them. That's uh, it. it was somewhere in the tech center, I think. Ooh. Um, that, Ooh. That, they, they weren't central location, so you, you you can read it online. I think the 
the way we presented it was not uh, – not, I think, the best that Denver has to offer. You know, what? I should have been there because I didn't mean like, we presented this area to Google, but we were like, you're not good enough, Google. We're saving this for someone better. <laughs> Google's and- new campus is in a prime location, <laughs> right in Boulder. Yeah, but I mean, it's not in a superior location. Oh, Our terrible. arm gestures here that need to be. <laughs> a lot of arm gestures. And just so everybody outside of Colorado understands, superior is a... Uh, suburb of Boulder, I guess. It's kind of like between Denver Boulder. I like Superior. Mm-hmm. It's it's fine. I would work there. I would too, Kim. But I feel like one of their requirements was like public transport and Superior is just not on the bus line or the train line. They don't have like drone transports yet for their employees. That's what Amazon's supposed to offer, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. See, that's what the... Yeah. Everybody gets a, a drone to fly them around. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's like a drone hat. They just wear drone hats everywhere, and it's just like... Like the beanie caps. Everybody's just flying around. Like one of those like much more much more complicated versions of the like the, the little hel- helicopter pl- hats that are like, you know, in comic books and stuff. This is what we were talking to Amazon about. And, <laughs> and they're like, good They've God. been very receptive to it so far, we think. So They just quietly stood up and left. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make a prediction. I think it's going to be Atlanta. I think if it's not Denver, I think it's going to be Atlanta. Is it because, like, all of the Hollywood stuff is happening in Georgia now? I just think, like, Atlanta is east, whereas, like, right now they have a West Coast presence. Um, You know, everybody was saying, oh, it could be Portland or, like, the Bay Area. I'm like, they're not going to have something that close to Seattle. Like, they're already out there. I think Atlanta would be just strategically, you know, Geo-wise, a good location. And then there's a lot of tech talent in Atlanta. Atlanta's not for me, but, you know, a lot of people like it. Yeah, if you are listening in Atlanta, Atlanta's great. Oh, yes, we love Atlanta. Five five stars Atlanta. (laughs) Five stars. Five stars Atlanta. Right, moving on. Okay, oh, (laughs) this is the part, Tyler, where we get to intro you. It's super embarrassing for you. Great. Okay, awesome. Glad you're on board. Um, Tyler, how often? So Adam and Tyler work together at Shutterstock. We do. Tyler, how often do you steal Adam's snacks from his desk at work? Snacks at your desk? I don't, so I'm not sure what she's talking about. No. I, I use, everybody I mean, did. There are snacks at my desk that reside there, and then I eat them. Oh. And so there's like a short shelf life. <laughs> there's a short window there for you to snag the snacks, but it's about like between me sitting on the table, sitting down, and then opening that snack. Adam, I feel like if Tyler's not stealing your snacks, you need better snacks. That might be the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what am I doing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I should just be getting snacks for people to steal instead of me. <laughs> well, why don't we put reviews on the podcast for what kind of snacks we think Adam should be getting at his desk. Ooh, so, yeah. I mean, Let's do that. The, yeah. Bunt cake is basically the number one snack that anybody nothing, could have. Down. Nothing bunt cake. Yeah. And we we talked about that pretty extensively last week. How do we not have a sponsorship yet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's a okay. lot of money in the bunk cake. So, so Adam, it's we'll huge. we'll work on that after okay. the pod about your snack list. We're gonna have a talk now. Okay, Tyler. Number two question: If you were stranded on a desert island and you could only choose one developer to go with you, but you had to choose between Adam and Jamie Love, oh, that's not even a choice. choose. <laughs> Jamie Love is a friend of the pod. He's been on three times. So. Yeah, oh, and clearly pandered to me. So it's it's, it's J Love <laughs> all the way. Yeah, through, I would through, choose J Love through J Lo I mean, all day long. So. J Lo is like actually on his team. Oh yeah. Oh. And he has Fair. just like this wealth of snacks that Tyler steals all the he time. He really so. does. I have nothing to bring He's to the really table good there. Snacks. He seems like he might have some like covert fishing skills. Fish, like you know, if you're on a happen. desert island, you have to spear fish, right? Oh, I thought you were like email fishing. No, no, maybe, maybe <laughs> also that kind. You're of. like you said you had fishing skills, and you're oh. like I thought, yeah, I thought you'd been email fishing. Now we're on this <laughs> island and we can't do email fishing. Yeah, that's it's not a skill you're gonna need. In that um, you have two kids, Tyler. I do. Which one's your favorite? Both of them. Ah, oh, great. See, I've tried to trip no. up three men on mm. this. One has fallen for it. One has not. You are but, one for two now. Um, all right. And uh, last question isn't very good. We'll leave it. Are you I sure? Think those are solid three. Solid three. 
Fourth, that was great. Fourth time's the charm. <laughs> That's not a saying. I always make like four questions, and the last one I get lazy, you know? So we yeah. never go there. I love this. See, I love everybody's imagination is that it's a great question. I know. Yeah. It's like a cliffhanger. Next time. And I just can't ask about red pandas anymore because Adam makes the red panda taco joke every time, and then... Yeah, I should move on to like fajitas and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, expand my joke. There's a baby red panda at the Denver oh. Zoo. So <gasps> delicious. There's a baby? Oh, oh cute. Yeah. Oh my god. So so delicious. So cute. <laughs> Deliciously cute. You just want to eat them up in a taco. We might have. To <laughs> oh my god. We're really more like a breakfast burrito kind of town. So you know. <laughs> we might have to go to the Denver Zoo and do like live. Podcast with the red panda, the baby red panda. I just have. For I just Christmas. Really recommend I just show up with like a fork and a spoon no. and like a napkin around like my. Good God. <laughs> we'll just we'll have like the zoo staff show up there and I'll just like do the podcast and I just look like I'm about to eat whatever oh, we're going to interview. It's worse every time. This is why I didn't want to talk about it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we move on to Acronomicon? Acronomicon! Excellent. I'm glad you, like, paused just, like, naturally for that. Do you well, expect me to do that? No. Well, yes, first okay. off. And secondly, it's because I'm the one that edits this shit. So, like, you know, oh, the yeah. pause is very helpful. Well, okay, yeah. so I thought it was a soundboard there. <laughs> oh. You know? And, and well, Apparently, yeah. this is a live performance. No, I we, didn't realize yeah, no, we're, no. I didn't realize not, I make Adam do it every week. Good. <laughs> not until we are like... Sponsored by the extremely lucrative <laughs> industry of bunt cakes, will we be able to yep. afford <laughs> bunt bunt cake industry? If you're listening to this, give us a call now. <laughs> Please, we've been begging for weeks. All right, I thought since we're talking about agile, we'd do a, a few Scrum related acronyms. And the first two that I have written down are super easy, and then Tyler has one. So the first one is CSM. CSM. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. I mean, I mean, seriously, like cereal. cereal. S. Super. This is gone. Man. <laughs> cereal Superman. Cereal Superman. Wow, that was Woo! Wrong. Nailed it. Somewhere somebody needs Fruity Pebbles, okay? <laughs> Cereal <laughs> Superman is on the case. <laughs> See? It's totally a thing now. Oh, my God. It's a certified Scrum Master. Yep. That's okay. my second guess. And then CSPO is the second one. Okay, this one's going to be probably even worse. Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get off cereal. You box yourself in right out of the gate. <laughs> Super product owner. <gasps> oh! Ooh, it's so close because it it's certified scrum product owner. Yeah, that's what I was so, going with. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You had one, Tyler. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, so invest. Uh, my favorite uh, acronym for, or I guess mnemonic for product backlogs, independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, and testable. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Which I definitely didn't have to write down because I could totally remember that. <laughs> we all know it off the top all. of my head. We well, all, why all was your finger just? Do. Why was your finger scrolling down the page? When you're <laughs> <laughs> no, invest is a really great one. Um, so definitely writing user stories. Make sure they meet those five criteria. Bitcoin, really good. right? Bitcoin, what? In investing. <laughs> oh my god, Warren Buffett, friend of the pod. He says, "Don't do it." He said, "Don't do it." Um, great. Uh, any other agile related acronyms? I mean, I mean, you had smart. I know, but I, I didn't, and then I thought invest is way better. Mm hmm Because, so smart, specific, measurable. Super monkeys are really terrible. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> Damn, Tyler just smoked you on that. Yeah, he, but he was scrolling. There's no C. I had he was, cereal he was Oh, he just smoked you on that Acronomicon. He, he was scrolling with his finger again, Cam. No, he did not even <laughs> read that. He just made that shit up. Um, go through smart, because you wrote it down, so I think you should talk about it. Real, just run through the... I wrote it down? Yeah, specific, measurable, achievable. Achievable, relevant, time-bound. Guys, I can read. <laughs> well done. <laughs> We're proud of you, man. <laughs> Woo! Adam, you're getting better every week. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're talking about Agile today, but uh, Tyler and I were emailing back and forth, and we thought a fun warm-up game would be to complain about Jira. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
because Jira is the worst. Kim, Kim looked at me like I was going to be like super amped on complaining about Jira. I can't Just imagine why you wouldn't be. <laughs> God, no, Jira, everybody loves to complain about Jira. Like, not just product people, like developers, VPs, <laughs> managers. People who made Jira. People who, <laughs> ma- people who work at Atlassian. They're like, I hate myself. <laughs> you guys, Atlassian is like a sponsor, though. Of the podcast? Jira's the best, and we love them. They're, <laughs> they're wonderful. They're, they're not Just like Bunk Cake. Oh, okay, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're positive on Bunk Cake. We're a little no, negative if, on the Jira. If right. Jira had Bunk Cake, it would be way just <laughs> overly convoluted and... I might make it better. It might not, though. 900-pound Bunk Cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's got everything you need. It's just not really good at being cake. It's, like. And it's not <laughs> actually a Bunk Cake. <laughs> It's so complex, you're just you're not sure what flavor it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's marketed for Bunk Cake, okay? For everybody who loves Bunk Cake, but at least your best <laughs> option. At least you pay millions of dollars for it. <laughs> then you show up and it's like an oatmeal raisin cookie and you're like, God damn it, this is not what I ordered. <laughs> um, so that's a pod. <laughs> We're all done here. I think we actually, like, right there, summed up the next yeah. twenty-minute discussion <laughs> in a, in a, you know, metaphor of bunt cake. Oh my god! Seriously though, I want Tyler to start out because I feel like you have. You said you had to whittle down your I, list. I, 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 uh, I complain, and uh, you know, as, I bring Jamie back on, ask him how I feel about Jira. He'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll give you a lot of information on that. So yeah, no, I had to think about this a lot. What are, what are I'm three glad. things? Because yeah, uh, obviously we don't have all the time in the world. So you know, I mean, we, we do it. technically, we do. But fair enough. All right, people, here we go. Nine hundred <laughs> things I can't stand about Jira. Uh, <laughs> What's your top one? <laughs> All right, so top one, uh, it has no distinction between a product backlog and a sprint backlog. There's yes, no difference. It's the worst. Oh, I can't, it's awful. Why? There's no difference in what you need to do and how you need to do it. So and you know what our engineering leads do to remedy this, which drives me absolutely insane? They make like fake sprints and put like yeah. backlog one, absolutely. backlog two. I'm like, to oh. be no. groomed, you know? You know what? We do that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody no, does you do, it. Actually. Atlassian, we are everybody giving does. you like gold golden information Absolutely. here. Just make the ability to like make backlogs. What? I don't get it. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. We do sprint and not sprint. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We don't do that. So you, you have hard. a certified scrum master you can comment on this, right? Uh, <laughs> do you know what I hate is like when you open a new epic and you have to put the epic name, but like the epic name is where the epic summary yes. is. And so those two fields are basically just like redundant. Yes. Why? Well, you have to have both of them. They're yes. required. And you, it pops up a little modal, and it lets you type the same thing into two different input fields. You know what I do? Copy and paste that shit. Absolutely. Right? From one field to the other. Every time. Every time. Except if you have to change it. <laughs> and then you can't That's ever the change the right one. You're always changing the wrong one. Oh, I don't understand. Mm. Who has a summary that's only like the same amount of characters as the title? It's completely redundant. It's anyway, terrible. number two, Tyler. Go on. All right. So, um, <laughs> it's a summary of the title. <laughs> Exactly. Basically. But it's not. The title is like, a summary of the summary. Like, um, so, all right. So, uh, when you look at, at most views in Jira, you get a ton of a ton of issues, right? Yes. But, you know, it, it, people can't work on many things at one time. So, everybody's working on one thing. Mm-hmm. So, everything in Jira is set up for somebody to manage a team and not for a team to manage themselves. It's not for a team to build a product. It's all about a project manager explaining yeah. exactly how to build a product. You're kind of, yeah, you're right. And this actually, and we'll go deeper into this, but which is like my biggest pet peeve of how a lot of people implement Agile is like if it is so complicated that you need a full-time project manager or Jeez. some yeah. role mm-hmm. to manage the actual process, it's too much. Yep. It's too much. But I think there's like some sort of like fairy that gets its wings every time an <laughs> engineer is like, how do I do this? Do you know another thing that I don't like is that there's not an easy way to toggle between list view and board view. Yeah. I always forget. I'm like, where is it? And then, you know, you're looking up in the top right. I'm like, I know it's up here somewhere, but it's not obvious and it's not intuitive. No. You're like, it's shit, I forgot the chicken blood. I can't complete the ceremony used. <laughs> I need to... <laughs> Is that not how your sprint <laughs> plannings go? <'Cause laughs> We're running out of chickens, you know? <laughs> 
Well, when you're when you're planning a sprint, the board view is the best, right? Mm-hmm. But you can't see the board view until you start the sprint. Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it's like Jira is great in. Uh, sorry. Uh, the good thing about Jira is that it is like there's. Ooh. Can't figure out how she's gonna finish that sentence. <laughs> The podcast just <laughs> ends. She just hits the stop recording button. Just dot, dot, dot. Whatever the audio version of the ellipsis. Is that, I mean, and I, I compare it to Salesforce a lot of times. Like, it is such a blank slate. If you do start with, like, a completely clean instance of Jira, like, you can build it to do exactly what you want it to do. However, people had so many pieces of functionality <laughs> with the enterprise version that it just becomes so complicated and just difficult to manage. And like you said, it's a full-time job for somebody to manage it. So it's kind of a bummer. Any others, Atlassian, Tyler? Atlassian, keeping project managers in business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so the other one is from today. So I uh, went to update a user story. I accidentally hit a button. All of a sudden, it asked me, do you want to leave? I said, no, I want to stay. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, Jira, let me stay. Uh, the screen blanked out. I had some of the Chrome around it, but the screen blanked out, and my... My changes were gone. My changes oh, were completely there's gone. There's nothing worse. And, and then they popped up a modal that just said LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they did, but it wasn't centered in the screen, right? So it was They so couldn't even close it. Bit, so you can't hit the end button. The X button. was off screen. <laughs> Oh my god! And you know, confluence. Con- oh god! <laughs> so it's many such a times. Thing to do that. Oh, like, it is. <laughs> I just wish that confluence and Jira were more like. Why do you have to log in separately? It's the same freaking thing. Like I don't understand why these don't flow back and forth more easily. Uh, Confluence is, uh, I mean, they've got these autosave functions. They've got this. They've got bulleted lists. They can do outline lists where. Uh, under one is the letter A instead of mm. Jira, where under one is the number one. So you have one one. <laughs> one? It's also, the worst it's so outlining true. ever. It's called the technical. I'm sorry, there's four. I gotta shut myself off. At some <laughs> the technical term is also one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little bit more one. Yeah. No. And confl- I really actually do enjoy some confluence. I think confluence I is great I for content you. management. Mm-hmm. Gotta get those wikis, you know, in there. Mm-hmm. Wiki! All right. Uh, you know, we could go on and on with this. This might be a regular bit now on the podcast <laughs> where we have Jira complaining for oh, three minutes. Oh, yeah, we just, standing issue. <laughs> we just ask our next guest what they hate about Jira. Yeah. Ex- everybody, I bet you every single person we have on this podcast can complain about something Is there Jira such related. thing as a reverse sponsor that Atlassian is going to, like... <laughs> hey, you just stop? They're like, going to shut us down. They're going to, like, hire they trolls. They got IPO money. You, know, you never know. <laughs> like, yeah, just put a, write up a Jira ticket. We'll get yeah. right on that. <laughs> <laughs> just pop it in the queue. No, 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 not that queue. The other queue. First, you have to start a sprint. <laughs> put it in the third backlog. <laughs> Labeled backlog we're never going to do. Put it under one. Under also one. <laughs> uh, we were going to talk about agile methodologies. Yes. <laughs> we're about 20 minutes in. Okay. But, you know. <laughs> That's the warm up. Huh? That's the warm up, yeah. Um, so <laughs> Tyler and I thought that maybe we would talk about different styles of agile and, and really, like, what does agile even really mean? Like, maybe, what, when would you say agile kind of came on the scene? Like, 10 years ago? It was, it was like, like the mid 90s. Yeah, it was so like the, the mid agile, 90s, yeah, the but it was still so. cutting oh, yeah, edge, yeah. you know, in the 90s. So, like, I mean, that'd be roughly like 20 years ago. No, but so the Agile Manifesto was dur- definitely during the 90s, but I feel like 10 Long years math. ago is when it became like pretty popularized, yeah, like exactly. how big software shops were implementing Agile, big companies started to kind of bring in Agile um, and kind of make that conversion from Waterfall to Agile, which I never even really worked in a, I would say I've never really worked in a Waterfall org. Have you? Oh, Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. How, what, I, what was it like? <laughs> well, okay, so they, they thought it was Scrum. They thought it was Agile. Um, oh, you know, it was, okay. It was two-week sprints, and, you know, we would plan out about six months' worth of work and then break it up into two-week sprints. It's, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's fragile, right? It's it's Scrum butt, so. Yeah. I call, it, I call it YOLO-gile. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
Mm-hmm. You, do you? <laughs> you open your <laughs> mouth sometimes. Um, so, like, what does agile really mean for you? Uh, you know me. It's it's all That's about the question. Point. It's all about mm-hmm. getting value out to users fast. You know, uh, small bits of value, very very quickly. Yeah. Iteration. Really, the, the iteration isn't as important, right? It's about the first iteration, right? Because that's the only one that matters. That's the active one. So, you know, it's about okay. shipping something, whatever the thing you're working on is. You know, it's about getting that out there and getting it to, in front of users. If you're planning out your second iteration, you know, the user might look at the first one and say, wow, that's terrible. You know, your whole plan's gone. Do you, do you guys watch Silicon Valley? No, I've never watched that show. Because they have Jared is, is the scrum master on Silicon Valley, and he has a, a actually pretty profound quote. Or it's not profound, but it's a really good is quote. Is this when he has all the stickies out? He's trying to explain the he's, scrum board. He's to just them? talking to, he just says that, you know, if you aren't deeply ashamed of your or your of your product when you put it out, then you waited too long. <laughs> oh yeah. No, and you know, actually it was the CEO of LinkedIn that originally made that quote. He okay. said if you're not embarrassed of the first version of your product, you launched too late. Yeah. Which is totally true. Yeah. Listen to episode one of the Products Popcorn podcast, and you'll know what we're talking about. We weren't drunk. Mm-mm. No. Maybe you should. I, I say. I say <laughs> with literally a mouthful of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> it's the literally in that sense. Hold on. Let me finish drinking the scotch. <laughs> Not drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to quote somebody else uh, that's in the room. Right now. It's not you, Adam. Damn agile <laughs> Agile isn't for engineers as much as it is a way to manage a product. Tyler, yeah, you want to so, expand on, yeah, expand on so, that? Uh, you know, I think when the original concept of Agile was put together, it wasn't a, a way for engineers to sit down and build a product, right? It's a way mm-hmm. to ship a product. It's a way to, yeah. uh, to, to think about a product. And, you know, so I, I think Agile as a product manager is really for me. And, uh, you know, I think my team uses Scrum, but they could use Kanban and they could use any of a number of methods to do it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of ways to do Agile, but thinking Agile, you know, that I, I think is really a product responsibility. Yeah, no. And not one that gets taken seriously, I think, as much as it should. Mm -hmm. Yep. And for all the novice PMs listening, Tyler, do you want to explain the difference between, like, pure Scrum and Kanban? Totally. So uh, push and pull. Um, Scrum, you plan a whole bunch of work that you're going to push through a two-week uh, sprint. Kanban, you pull work through. Uh, so you pick one thing off at a time and, and you, you, you pull it through the, the, the knot hole there. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's a big difference between push and pull. Between Scrum and Kanban. And I'm a huge fan of Kanban um, just because I do think it's it's kind of the most agile methodology you can possibly use, right? You, there is no planned work, essentially. It's just a giant backlog. You're pulling straight off the top. And it's, uh, I would say, the most lightweight methodology, would you it say? Is. Do, yeah, you, do you find that you like it because it sounds a little more exotic than Scrum? <laughs> Well, I did live in Japan for three years of my life, Um, so it doesn't sound that exotic to me, but maybe to others, yes. (laughs) Super exotic to me. So I have to to say I'm a scrum guy. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, the the only reason I like it, I think, more than Kanban, and I've I've definitely tried both, uh, is that I think scrum enforces a degree of accountability, right, where you're setting for yourself a a goal, uh, a timely goal. And you're trying to decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push this piece of work through in this amount of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a really good point. It's also, it's really hard to run Kanban in a big company or even yeah. a medium-sized company mm-hmm. because you have your C-levels and your VPs that are asking, mm-hmm. what are you shipping this mm-hmm. sprint? Yeah. And if you're running Kanban, you can't really tell them. It's no. less tangible with Kanban. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say that. Um, I just think it's really funny that, like, Five years ago or 10 years ago, everybody was super pumped about Agile and Scrum and everybody's on board and all the software shops are like switching over to Scrum. And now if you just go like I follow all these, you know, software PM threads on Medium and they're all just complaining about Agile and Scrum. Like, why do you think it got such a bad name and when did this happen? I don't think Agile and Scrum ever got a bad name. I just think what people think Agile and Scrum is, people don't like they yeah. gave. I understand. They gave it a bad name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think the biggest pitfalls are? Uh, I think that one of the biggest things is so in invest right, which is my acronomicon for the day. <laughs> uh, which, you know, uh, one of the one of the big ones for me is valuable, right, you know, or vertical. And I think that uh, 
people think that delivering value to themselves is a real thing. Right, I can build this foundational piece because next time I'll be able to use it and it's valuable. You know, yeah. If it's not out in front of a user, if they're not touching it, feeling it, trying it, you know, then it's not it's not valuable at all. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Um, and do you? So going back, so if we were like hypothetically working in a true waterfall organization, where okay, I write up my six hundred page product spec. Uh, and you know, I handed it off to the engineer. Six hundred page products. Oh my god, like, people like did that. Oh yeah, crazy to think about. It was like a typewriter and like a cigarette. <laughs> <out. It> was <laughs> like, <laughs> you can't see. Done when it's done. See, <laughs> <laughs> you can't see Adam fake typing on a typewriter. That was great. Um, it's exactly how a cat types on a typewriter. So. <laughs> I didn't even have my fingers out. I just had all my fingers together. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> No, I forget. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Do you think that we actually build more quickly with Agile than we did with Waterfall? Uh, no, I, I really don't. I actually think uh, if you do it well, you build slower. Okay. Uh, and I, I think the reason why is because uh, you build better. Um, you, you, you build you build a feature and you're, you're really thinking about that feature much more uh, in how that feature lives on its own than how it is a part of a whole. And in any waterfall project I've ever been involved in, and I've been involved in a lot, um, the, when you get towards the end of the implementation timeline, every feature gets worse. Every single one of them, yeah. you take shortcuts because you're hitting that deadline because you set that goal, you know, you set that way out in the distance and you, you, you ship junk. Yeah, so I think I mean this is this is an Air Force thing, right? Uh, you know, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So Ooh. you know, Agile is all about slowing down. It's all about building predictably and not about building fast. It's about building slow because slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Air That's, Force analogy, Ooh. Adam, you've never made one of those. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. That caught me out of left field. I really thought that was going to be his thing. <laughs> There were two things that you talked about in your email, Tyler, that we should bring up. Um, one was swarm pattern. So yeah. um, I had never really heard that term before. So Okay, so I hadn't either uh, until a couple of years ago when it was introduced to me. And, and at first glance, it was like, that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. How is it? <laughs> and I, 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 uh, you know, I tried it, and I was very reluctant to try it, but I'm this junior guy, and what am I going to say? Um, and I, I, it turns out it's awesome. And so I, I come over to Shutterstock and I try it out there. And uh, again, every engineer, just, that, that's the dumbest thing I've had. That's not going to work. And two weeks later, they're like, this is great. We're, we love it. How did you um, get them on board to try it? I, I told them, give me two weeks. Oh, that's it's nice. a sprint. Give you a can sprint. do anything for two weeks, Give right? A sprint. You nice. know, let's see what happens. Um, and so the swarm pattern is uh, the business doesn't think of my team as a bunch of developers. Mm -hmm. They are one team. And so mm -hmm. they can work on one thing at a time. And so I yeah. challenge the team to build one feature at a time. The highest priority feature the entire team works on it. And to figure out a way to divide the work and to collaborate on the work, to encourage pair programming, uh, and, and to a lot of code reviews and a lot of high high paced collaboration uh, so that they're building one feature at a time and shipping That's, it really, really quickly. And how do you deal with like fires that come up during Totally. Uh, it's so much easier. The whole team is working on one thing. So then so the is whole the fire team works more on the fire. Important? Then ah, the one thing they're working on is less important. And if it's less important, fine. We're going to pop it in the sprint. We're going to drop the last thing out of the sprint. It's no problem at all. And when they're done with this, they're going to work on that. So and you can switch gears, but everybody has everybody to switch switches gears. gears. And then oh, you oh. have a greater distribution of knowledge amongst the developers. So you that would it's be not the biggest just, benefit. Yes, yeah, it is. And, you know, uh, so... One of the ways that I sold this to the team was uh, right before it happened, we were about to ship a, a, a whole new page built with this new framework. You know, we were really excited about it. This and is my then, framework. It's not your framework. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Fine, it's your framework. So uh, anyway, uh, we're about to ship this, and one of the guys gets sick, and he's out for three days. And so our timeline got pushed back three days because oh, we had one engineer working on it. Oh. And it's like, you know what? When that happens, that's fine. That's no problem at all because everybody has that and everybody can jump in. I also hear all the time, like, we need to distribute the knowledge among the engineering uh -huh. team and, like, nobody really knows how to do that effectively. So this would be – this is a, a great, great way, to, way do. to do that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. So how many engineers um, did you have in the swarm? We have seven. So we have, okay. we have seven members of the team. And that includes one person who is a specialist at testing. 
Though okay. she, the only thing she does is not testing, right? She okay. can get involved and, and, and jump in where we need her, right? Okay. Um, and so uh, everybody's involved in research, everybody's involved in design, everybody's involved in development, everybody's involved in testing, and everybody's involved in deployment. Do you even have to have a sprint planning if every single person is only working on one feature that sprint? So what we do is uh, we use our grooming to figure out what we're going to do and our planning to figure out how we're going to do it. Okay. And so the way we get around Jira's nonsense without a sprint backlog is we break out subtasks. Um, and so the whole team has one open story and they have a bunch of subtasks. We have this definition of done that breaks out. There's a standard template for our tasks and it breaks out what pieces we need to do for every piece of work that we need to ship. Very cool. Okay. And did everybody on, did you get any resistance after the first sprint? Was there anybody on the team that didn't like it? Um, I, there were people who thought there were things that could change, but nobody had fundamental problems. And, uh, you know, so we changed them. And then we, you know, tried them for two weeks. And if they worked, then we kept them. And if not, we pivoted. And that's fine because it's a sprint. And, and that's you, your idea is you iterate. So you yeah. always have that chance for iteration. Yeah. And you still use this? We do. Okay. Do you use we it do. every sprint or does it depend on what you have in the backlog? Um, so... Framework-wise, a component-driven architecture lends itself much better to this. And so yeah. when we're working in uh, less component-driven work, there are times when we have to split up into smaller swarms. Mm -hmm. We try to never have fewer than two people on any any given story. Um, and so generally, right now we have, I think, three stories in flight. And okay. so we're, we're split up a little bit right now. Um, but there will be times when we come back together, and there will be times when we split up a little bit. So it's, it's, it's the team's responsibility to figure that out because they know how to build... They know how to write code better than I do, so it's yeah. not my thing. Hopefully. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they're, they, you know, they split up, and they're, they organize themselves and figure out what the best way to, to, you know, implement the pattern is. But they always try to stick to that pattern. Very cool. Okay, and that seems like really lightweight process-wise as it well. Is. It is. Hmm. Yeah, I'm curious how, so our team is, like, pretty loosey-goosey. Um, <laughs> yes, you will. Put it, yes, yes, you will. Put it, put it nicely. Um... We we look. That's, a, that's we, an agile term. <laughs> Lucy goosey. Lucy goosey for those in the biz, you know. <laughs> um, so we it's work on we now. we build out like very tiny pieces or very small components yeah. for like for like buttons and stuff like that. Sure. So so how would swarm really work when you're doing like things that are like much smaller stories rather than like whole pages and stuff like that. Um, so I, I, I do like to make stories a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, our ideal size for a story is less than one half of one sprint. But okay. there are a lot of times where I see. this sprint we have five stories in the sprint. Mm -hmm. So for two weeks we're doing five things. Okay. But the goal is we're going to ship five things. We're going to ship five pieces right. of value. It doesn't really um, work well if you just have kind of one-offs, like change this color, maybe a bunch of like little tech debt tasks. Right. Or... And, and so we try to avoid that. So like tech debt tasks, we try to keep out of stories. But if there's a lot of tech debt in a particular area, there's, I guarantee you, a product opportunity in that same area. Sure. And they can go ahead and refactor at that same time. Hmm. Um, I try not to own tech debt. That's, I'm not good at that. So oh. you know, I try to step back from that. So much um, tech debt. But when they tell me there's a problem, I find another product problem around it and give yeah. me a chance to solve that problem. Okay. Um, now, as far as how you might do that from a you know sort of more platform oriented perspective, I think one of the uh, one of the biggest things there uh, is that platform oriented is a little tricky. Yeah. Uh, how do you? You're not really shipping value. You know, you're shipping value to people who ship value, um, which is not to say that you're yeah. useless or anything. You feel terrible about your life. Well, um, is me. Well, Adam works on platform. I do. Um, I do. <laughs> but um, you know, if you're building a, an alert component, for instance, you know, it's got a bunch of different styles that are that are there. It's got you know style guide components that need to get built. Um, it needs to you know have CSS built. It needs to have you know the the, the actual JSX built. Like you know, there's a lot of pieces that yeah. need to get built. Um, and one of the best things that the team does is use atomic commits. And so uh, two, three, four times a day, they'll push code to each other, review it, and then push it back into their fork mm -hmm. before they actually ship their train off to production. Yeah, that's so, nice. Um, it's a nice way to collaborate and keep them in touch with what each other's doing mm -hmm. when they're working on a particular piece. Yeah. That's really cool. I like the swarm thing. It, it, I think nice. that in that sense, it also helps influence this idea of uh, it's it's much much more iterative that way too. So like yeah. if you have a fire along the way, you can be like, mm -hmm. okay, I didn't just have one developer work on this for two, two days and do like one commit. Yeah. 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 And so and then it, that commit gets stale because mm -hmm. you know the whole thing gets off course. Yeah. So yeah. I really like that. That's cool. The other thing it's nice for is controlling the business. Right. Yeah. They always want to push more through the pipeline. You know, that's it's an easy decision. This is what we're working on. Is this more or less important than that? 
Yeah. Great. We'll work on it next. Yeah. Or great. We're going to shelve this. Yep. We'll work on it now. You know? It is really good to kind of train is the wrong word, perhaps. It's not, but not the right word, <laughs> though. I mean, <laughs> you are training a little bit. For any of our managers that are listening. No, to train, like, management, like, you get one priority. Uh, yeah. Because you, they always want several priorities. Well, and, and, and when they're switching priorities, there's cost associated to that. Yeah. You know? uh, yeah. You, you put work on the shelf. It gets stale. There's cost of bringing it back. There's cost of putting it there. There's there's enormous cost involved with that. Yeah. So you know our job is to to you know make the most money with the with the least. So I like the swarm pattern. Okay, That's nice. I like it. Um, what other questions do I have for you? <laughs> so I kind of had a thought. Sorry, did you have something? Uh, I was just curious when we're going to move into talking about real life applications outside of agile methodologies, outside of. Uh, the engineering, the software development world, because I think that's what's really interesting to me is oh, how other like Jira just released a tool for for non software teams. Is that what you're talking about? I, I I just talking about like what kind of life is like living with a product uh, manager, <laughs> and kind of like in the best way though, like where like a product manager can take those skills that they've developed on the job yeah. and apply them to real life and kind of help facilitate, you know, an efficiency in life um, outside of software development. Um, when you're uh, helping a family of four, let's say, get out of the house, for instance, <laughs> um, you there, know there anything are about times that. when trying to be the most efficient is damaging. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where, where you don't have a shot to be efficient, so you just gotta hang on and enjoy the ride. You're like, you committed um, to this task. You did, right? <laughs> and you gotta put your shoes on, and, and you know what? That was a deal that we made. That was your choice, right? You committed to it, so I expect it to be done. Yep. We're only focusing on the shoes right now. That's Everybody's. All, that's, that's all we gotta worry about. Swarm for the shoes. shoes. <laughs> It actually happens, though, and it does not work. Um, oh, it's, uh, yeah, what it's, a bummer. Um, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> that that being said, I I will say that the most effective tool I have as a product manager did come from learning how to be a parent. Um, how so? It, choices. Uh, I can't tell you how often I'll give my business two choices, right? Yes. The same way I'll, I'll give my kids choice. Do you want to put these shoes on or these shoes? Yeah. Not do you want to put shoes on? Because <laughs> I can tell you the answer to that question. <laughs> you do you want to put prioritize. on the Paw Patrol shoes or the Lightning McQueen shoes? <laughs> and, and you got to make that decision. <laughs> and if the business can make a decision about which pair of shoes they want to wear, they'll be fine. So <laughs> just take away whether or not they want to wear shoes. Yes. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> exactly. You're not giving them the choice to not <laughs> wear <laughs> shoes. You give them two choices, you're fine with both of them. Everything's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um my last question is like, what do you think is next? Like, do you feel like there's going to come a time when people are like, all right. Scrum is so 2015. We're going to move on to the next cool, you know, in methodology. Called Dragon. <laughs> or something else. <laughs> could be called Dragon. I mean, you don't know. It could I be called Dragon. It's called Dragon. <laughs> Me too. Point. Or Red Panda. I am a, that way that you're like, I am a Dragon Master. <laughs> <laughs> It would be way cooler than Scrum Master. That would be cool. You like that. that would be um, cool. Kimberly, Dragon Master. Dragon Master. <laughs> Certified Scrum Dragon Master. Oh, CSDM, dude. yeah. CSDM, the Acronomicon, we made it up. Um, now, what do you think is, like, next? Or do you think there is something next? <laughs> well, okay, so uh, every year they do a, a survey of top companies and figure out what they're using. Yep. Waterfall's up year over year. I Are mean, you that, serious? Three, four years running now. Waterfall has been trending up. Who? And, like, what companies? Uh, they don't release specific companies, just okay. aggregated numbers. But okay. um, you know, Amazon. <laughs> uh. Amazon releases like every seventeen <laughs> seconds. I don't think they're running waterfall. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, yeah, the waterfall's up, and and uh, so I think you know one of two things will happen. Uh, either people will realize that you know waterfall is a, a valuable way to build long term products, and and they'll figure out a better mechanism to predict the delivery of a long-term uh, initiative. Uh, or people realize that they never knew what Scrum was in the first place and <laughs> will just start over and call it something different, like Dragon. It will just get rebranded, and it will mm -hmm. be the same thing, but it is going to be the hottest thing since sliced bread. And I think I, that's what's going to happen. That's where I, my money, I'm sorry, that's where my Bitcoin is. So. Ooh. Yeah, ooh, I like the you Bitcoin. Didn't hear, you didn't hear that, Warren. <laughs> 
<laughs> Warren, don't worry. We stopped buying Bitcoin when it hit 7,000. Um, Did we? Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> No, I totally agree with you. I feel like they are just going to rebrand it and change it like ever so slightly. And it's going to be this big new thing. But it's really just still iterative development. Yeah. But all right. So just a rebrand is what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, rebrand. Yeah. Some, the, some the, marketing the, the, the person. The new dragon process. The new Dude, dragon I really want to dragon. call it dragon oh, now. Maybe we should. The three of us should just. I'll, I'll help you roll with Come it. out with a new book. New audio book about the new dragon. Slash pop up. Slash pop up. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Dragon Popcorn here. So. <laughs> I do. I like it. I like it. Uh, Tyler, do you have any last words about Agile or any last advice for new product managers trying to do Agile the right way? Uh, wow, that's uh, so. When I first started as a product manager, uh, I was at a small company, and there were no other product managers. And I spent the first four years of my career googling how to be a product manager. Um, <laughs> literally, nobody knows. So, yeah. um, you know, find somebody who has any earthly idea what the hell they're talking about, and 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 follow them for a little bit, and then find somebody else and follow them for a while. Nobody knows how to do this perfectly. We're all figuring it's it true. out. It's uh, true. You yeah. know, there's uh, there's product managers who are leading things at Google who are still figuring it out because nobody has ever done this before. So I read a Medium article that was like, everybody's just really winging it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I really liked that. Like, yeah, you know, product managers have to do, like, my day-to-day is so different every day that you kind of have to just be able to learn on the fly a lot. Mm-hmm. But Well, this is, this is my family's motto. Care come winate, win care, which is Latin for cheat to win. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that in school though kids great where can we find you tyler you have a uh, the twitters i i i have tweeted i oh, have good. i have tweeted once or twice i think so um uh, yeah no i uh, i'm a shutterstock so stop on by <laughs> <laughs> it's tyler the dragon master <laughs> that's, what, that's what they call me that's what they call it's all my business cards just so. stop by downtown denver <laughs> shutterstock office and ask for the dragon <laughs> Uh, they will have no idea what you're talking about. I would suggest <laughs> not to do better. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Tyler, for coming on the podcast. Thank and you for uh, we'll be back next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks for listening to Product Popcorn. You can subscribe to the podcast or leave a review on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. You can always read more at productpopcorn.com or follow us on Twitter at Product Popcorn.